How are you guys doing? Is everybody having a great pandemic? Great <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> that, that one. Oh, wow. Um, no, no, no. Um, I'm uh, Peter Saji. I, uh, I wrote the episode Juneteenth, and I have with me the, the cast of Blackish. I have Anthony Anderson, uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, uh, Yara Shahidi, Lawrence Fishburne, Marseille Martin, Miles Brown, and Marcus Scribner. And we are going to talk about episode Juneteenth in honor of uh, Juneteenth. Uh, that is, well, I guess it's probably today that you okay. guys can't, but it's not today when we are recording. Um, so, Anthony, uh, let me uh, start with you. Uh, tell me about why we did a musical episode about Juneteenth. Hold on, let me call Kenya to get my answer. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why we do it, did it, other than the fact that, you know, uh, Kenya had come to me and said this is something that he, he wanted to do. You were writing it. And, <clears throat> and we wanted to do something uh, different and come out of the box uh, like no other show has ever done uh, to start a new season. And, and what better way than to do that uh, than to write an episode about Juneteenth and uh, uh, perform it as, uh, as a stage play and, and musical. We raise their children, then raise their buildings, and they made billions. I'm catching feelings. Awesome. Uh, let, me ask, let me ask you this, Sajay. I know you're moderating this. Yes, yes. Why, why, why did you decide to write an episode <laughs> like, like Juneteenth? That's what I was going to chime in and say. I think that's actually a question for you, Saji. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, know. yeah. I appreciate you guys uh, asking me that. It's hard to ask myself these questions, these tough questions. Um, no, honestly, this episode was one that I, I think, if I remember correctly, Kenya was going to be on a Gronish a lot this season. And so I knew that he wasn't going to have the time to do this episode. And so I remember thinking... Oh, like, because like, we talked about the end of season three, but we knew we wanted to sort of start it at the beginning of season four because we needed that time to allow everyone to rehearse. And so I remember spending hiatus just researching about Juneteenth because I didn't necessarily want to volunteer, but it was something that just seemed really daunting, but also seemed really, really important. And so I came in as we were like talking about it, and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, this fact and that sort of fact. And, and so when I got asked to, to write it, it was, First, it was a tremendous honor, and then it was terrifying because it was like, okay, you know Hamilton? You know that thing that sort of changed the world? Okay, we're going to try to do that in 22 minutes, right? And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, what have I, what have I signed up for? And, um, but then I just remember sort of seeing all of you guys and what you were capable of doing. And, and, and just, I remember one of the first rehearsals, and when, when uh, Derek, Derek Watkins, Fonsworth Bentley was walking you guys through the, the, the music and, and the choreography. And it was like, it was just bottomless wells of talent. <laughs> it was like, oh, like it was, it was like, oh, we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through this. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, it was, it was really just came out of just, you know, loving the show, loving what Kenya Barris had created and wanting to be able to sort of continue that legacy and do it properly. And then just having you guys have my, have my back and being able to actually take the words and make them incredible. Um, and, and speaking of that, uh, uh, Tracy, uh, Tracy, uh, before you sang, uh, right now, I guess you, you, you can be seen singing in the high note, which is on demand. <laughs> right? but, Settle um, down, Saji. <laughs> before that, you know, you, you uh, sang these two musical numbers. Uh, uh, can you tell me about what, how it felt when you heard you were going to be flexing a different muscle, like a musical? Um, I'm not going to lie. It was, uh, it was a little bit anxiety provoking um, to think that we were going to shift gears. I think we do it so often on Blackish in such a good way, but this was something we hadn't done. So there was an element of, is this going to trivialize something that is as important as it is? Are we going to be able to do this at the level that um, would give it the honor that it deserves. Um, 
And I didn't know if we could. We were trying something. And, it, and as you said, like it's a daunting task to put all that into a 22 minute episode. Um, we do it successfully. That's part of the DNA of Blackish. That's one of the things we do is we take these very large sort of um, things and, and break them up into these small ways that, so that we can digest them. But I didn't know if it was going to be possible. I love, I always love the challenge. It's one of the things I love about my job and the collaboration of um, the art form that we're a part of is that it really is something that requires all of us. Um, and, you know, there's such a family and a love and a trust with our cast and our crew and our team of Blackish that it felt like it was something we could do, but I was anxious about it. Was it going to be cheesy? You know, I mean, we were trying to do a stage play in a 22, 22 minute sitcom. I mean, <laughs> we're like, okay. <laughs> Um, but again, you know, uh, the, the trust that we have between our cast and the family that we have on Blackish, I knew that we could lean in there, but you never know how it's going to come together until it comes together. But it, it was, it's been, it was worth it. I watched it again last night. It's a really beautiful episode, really powerful episode. You know, Tracy, not, not just a stage play and musical, <laughs> uh, in 22 minutes for a sitcom. But the subject matter of yeah. slavery and yeah. uh, emancipation and, and all of that, uh, coupled with humor, uh, you know, horror, you know, uh, uh, and, and everything that you can imagine, that, that, that is what makes our show special. Uh, b because we have the cast to be able to pull that off. Because if you were to drop that in anyone else's lap, it was like, so you want me to talk about slavery? You want me to sing about it? You want me to be happy? You want me to be sad? You want me to tell these jokes? And you want me to do it in and, 22 minutes? And, and learn choreography. And learn choreography? Ah, OK. So <laughs> I, I think it's just a testament uh, of the cast that you know, we were able to assemble you know, seven, almost eight years ago now to, to start start this journey. Uh, I'd like to tip my hat and applaud uh, uh, our entire cast uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera for being able to pull these types of episodes off uh, year after year after year after year. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, to that point, uh, Marcus, you know, there, just to, to Anthony's point, there were a lot of things we had to do. You know, we had to talk about slavery and, and there were jokes to hit. You know, like one of my favorite moments was you singing pyramids, right? <laughs> like, um, but, uh, it was just like a, a, a well- Pyramids! <laughs> but it, was, it was a much needed, you know, light moment. And so uh, talk to me about your process. Like, obviously that's a, a tightrope. Talk to me about your process of approaching the seriousness, but also being able to hit those, those lighter moments. Um, I think like everybody else was saying, it was an extremely difficult episode to approach. Like I have no musical talents whatsoever, like innately at all. Can't sing, can't dance, do any of that. But, um, it's nice being an actor because you get to step into those lanes, um, because they're all different forms of art and they coincide and, um, just trying to learn how to bring the comedy into such a serious space was kind of it was a tough process like you didn't want to like upset people but at the same time I feel like one of the things that I liked about our episode was since it was a musical it felt more like a celebration um of our freedom but then at the same time um talking to people how about how it really is like we're still not free yet um there are still difficulties and and barriers that we have to break down um and push our way through and I feel like our episode kind of like highlighted those but at the same time celebrated the freedoms um, and celebrated Juneteenth like it's never been celebrated before. So um, try to approach the jokes with a light heart, try to approach them the same way that we do every single week because we just have a tight knit cast like that. And I know we're all gonna play off of each other perfectly. Um, so it was really just getting the singing and dancing down for me. <laughs> Fish, Lawrence. Uh, uh, what was it like, talk, talk to me about what was it like walking on the sets for the first time to perform the musical numbers. Uh, like we built this in particular. Yeah, you know, the thing that I remember uh, saying to a lot of people, um, and I think you'll probably remember this, Anthony, is um, I got the feeling that we were actually making history. Mm -hmm. You know, 
we were making history, not just in the sense of like uh, our television show. Our television show is, is great. Um, but the fact that we took a subject like Juneteenth, musicalized it, um, had choreography, you know, had music from Allo Black, had music from The Roots, had a choir, um, the way Anton shot it, uh, the heat. I don't know, you guys remember how hot it was when we shot that thing? It was like August. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was slave hot. It was slave hot. It was slavery days hot, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it just, I just kept saying, uh, to, I think it was Anya. I think Anya was our first AD on that one. Uh, I'm saying it feels like we're making history. I didn't know about Juneteenth until I was 18 years old or 19 years old. I, yeah, 19. I, 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 was, uh, I was doing a movie called Rumblefish in Tulsa, Oklahoma, of all places. Um, and uh, I landed on Juneteenth, and some friends took me to a celebration there, and blah, blah, blah. But it just, it was not a part of history that I was uh, familiar with. And, and I, I think the fact that we've done this episode and that it continues to be watched by more and more people as the years go by is really important um, in terms of bringing this part of our history, you know, to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Anthony, uh, first of all, uh, amazing quarantine beard. You, uh, but uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing mine. Uh, but uh, talk to me about the, the table read. Me I too. Can you see mine? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> mine is a little weak, but it's there. Oh, yeah, it's so fine. Can, Can you see mine? Can you see mine? Can you see mine? Yeah, every, yeah. Every, everyone's strong quarantine beard. Miles, your beard is supposed oh. to be under your chin, not on your top lip, son. <laughs> mm -mm. It's, it's right here. It's going on like one spot. It's like getting really long on this one spot right here. There you go. This All one right. Spot. Keep, keep drinking milk. <laughs> no. All right. What, 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 what's, your, what's your question, Saji? And, uh, tell, talk to me about the table read. Uh, how did it feel during it? How did it feel after? And how, how was the script received? Uh, uh, First off, the script was received well. Uh, secondly, just like Lawrence said, you know, in, in reading that uh, script at the table read, felt like you were a part of history as you were making history. And then we turned to each other and was like, are we about to do this? Are we gonna do this? Yeah, is this what, is this what we're really about to do right now? This is how we're gonna come out the gate on them? Uh, so it was just, you know, I exciting. Um, I, I was excited. My adrenaline was flowing because after the table read, then we had a week or so of rehearsal before we even got into production. So, uh, and as Tracy said, you know, it was anxiety ridden, you know, it was just like, yo, okay. I really got to be on my P's and Q's now. Everything that I ever thought I wanted to be as an actor and become as an actor is going to be called upon for this particular episode on, on this show that we're doing. And uh, I, I think it brought out the best in all of us, which I believed it would after that table read, because we were all just so excited to be able to do this. And, and to take our swing at this, because this is all that we've ever wanted to do, you know, was to move the culture forward with our show and, and to say important things and, and to be pro provocative and, and thought provoking. And uh, this particular episode embodied all of that and, and then some. So uh, that, that, that's my answer to that. And then to finally see uh, the finished product. It was, it was just amazing. You know, I was in tears watching it every time I, I rewatch it. You know, I get chills. I'm getting chills right now speaking about it just because of what it means and, and what we all had to do uh, to make sure that uh, the finished product was, was what it is, if that makes sense. Well, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. Uh, Yara, Yara Shahidi, um, I would like 
Uh, I'm calling everyone by your first and last name. <laughs> uh, Yara Shahidi, tell me, what was your, what's your most vivid memory about uh, either rehearsing or producing or, or this, this episode? Well, I mean, I remember it all pretty well, but I think what made the most impact was when we rehearsed on the stage for the first time. Um, mm. You know, because I think as everyone said, we were getting all of this in increments, first feeling impacted by the script, and then we even had a studio session in which we were all singing the songs. But that first rehearsal after a week of doing all of these little bits in which the choir was with us, we were on this set, really spoke to how much of a communal experience even shooting this was because I know people have said it before, but it really took everyone on their A-game cast, crew, everybody, and just another level of investment to even pull this off. Um, so it was really beautiful to step onto that stage and to actually see, as we sang, we built this, what we built. We built this. This is something I'd love to hear from everyone. Um, Marseille, Marseille Martin, if you could go next. You could tell <laughs> yes, it's me. me, yes. What is, what is your uh, most vivid memory of, of Juneteenth? Oh, I don't know. I, like, I do know it like, pretty well as well, but I think, I think it would definitely be um, being at the studio, like singing it like, all together like as one. That was, I thought was beautiful because um, it's like we made a song. We make songs about something so powerful, and w yeah, we did two. Yeah, we did two songs. Yeah, it was exciting, and yeah, hearing everyone sing was the best part for me. Like just hearing everyone in their like full potential, full. Um, it was it was like a full like whole moment for us, and and especially for me because um, I knew about Juneteenth, but like I never fully understood it. Um, I think I was, I think it was 13 when we shot it. So I was learning about it in school, but not like fully. But um, it was very, it was very exciting because I was doing it with the people that I love, this cast, the crew. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just a full like love moment for me. And it's, but my, my favorite memory was uh, performing the song. I love that. <laughs> you know, it was so interesting. We went into the studio, all of us together, which was also really special because yeah. it wasn't like we all went in separately and did our thing. Like we all were in there together. We were all like, wasn't Jennifer doing like vocal warm ups for us? <laughs> Teaching us how to open up our voices and do all these things with our voices. So it was, it was really special to be in there together. Yeah. yeah. Were we like harmonizing or something? Were we harmonizing? We, we tried to harmonize. Attempting to harmonize. <laughs> that was that was one of many moments where I just got chills, like watching you guys. Like, and it was you were all huddled around a microphone too, which just made it even more sort of communal feeling. It, it was in incredible. Wow. Which in this in this time we wouldn't do. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, this is pre pre pandemic. We were able to do. Uh, Miles Miles Brown. <laughs> Hello. What is, here, what is here. Hello. Uh, vivid memory. Hello. Uh, um, I mean, the whole, the whole, that whole week was a really good memory. Um, that was probably one of the, the craziest experience um, on, on set that we've ever had, or for me. Um, but I think, I think the craziest moment where I realized how big of an impact we were going to have on this episode um, was towards the beginning, to be honest, because it was when we just, I think we just recorded the two songs and then we got back to the set the next day, I think. And then we heard it back and we we're all sitting in chairs next to each other reading. And we were all, um, I think, we, like, we all looked at each other and we were like, oh, so we're actually like, like, we're really doing this. Like, we're actually going to be dancing and we're going to be singing on stage and all that stuff. So I think that was like one of the craziest experiences. And then, and then on top of that, when we started practicing, like, with our props and all that stuff, Anthony with the broom and all that. Um, I think that kind of just like our whole choreography was awesome. Plus, I kind of helped with the dancing, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of where I came in and did my part. You did. Um, but yeah, I think the whole, I think that whole uh, episode was really important for all of us to learn and all, all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Marcus Scribner, um, please tell me about your, your uh, most vivid memory of June 2. Uh, most vivid memory. Um... I think I always remember the studio session because of the fact that we were all like supporting each other and 
that kind of that communal environment, that family environment that we've built up over the years. Um, I feel like it makes us all better. And it really came into play this episode because um, we all got to showcase our strengths and help each other out with um, different things that some of us may not have been as good at. So it was it was nice to have everybody that you love, like surrounding you and helping to lift you up. Um, and I always one of my favorite one of my favorite lines that we had to sing was Miles saying, "Plant my forty acres and go stride the mule." I knew Miles was going to get up. <laughs> Marcus, I swear to God, I swear to God, that's why I didn't bring up the studio session. That's why I did not bring up the studio session. That is not. That is not why I brought up the studio session. I knew. I knew someone was gonna say. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, bro. I was trying to do the lower. I was trying to do the lower octave, and they're trying to get me to do the higher octave. It was beautiful, I Miles. It was beautiful. The higher one. I wanted to. Hey, do Miles, one. you you don't you don't have a problem doing the lower octave now. Yeah, I know. Not, I know. You weren't ready. We can re-record. I was in between both octaves. It was bad either way. It could have been bad. I was fired. <laughs> yeah. we also, I'm, on the, I'm on the lower side now. I also think we need to. Jennifer is not here, but this episode featured one of the most important Ooh. talents of Jennifer Lewis: the leg kick. The leg <laughs> kick. Ooh, ain't that something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh. It was featured in this episode, and if you know Jennifer Lewis, or even if you don't, this is one of her main talents and skills among many. Yes, <laughs> Tracy. Not only that, but it was a it was a kickball change leg. Kick. Oh yes, yes, yes. It was several moves in one. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, that was a really big deal for this episode. I know, I know, Judy was at the forefront. But B, B behind the A should, was Jennifer should, Lewis's kickball changing kick. You should right. see that, that, Did Jennifer part, kick the, her kneecap to her forehead <laughs> and keep her balance and do what she did. I was in awe. Life changing. <laughs> you should see the part when we were going back and forth dancing and we we're just screaming go under. Like that was the funny oh, thing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was that for me? <laughs> It was a competition. Who could scream louder? Yeah. Uh, you guys, let's let's be clear where that came from. That was so you could all get me to do it on beat. <laughs> <laughs> we worked we worked that into the song so that I could get under yeah. at the right yeah, time. Two and the four, and not the one and the three. <laughs> if you see our lips, so we perform that, you can see us exactly. screaming that while we we're doing that. Part. Our friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I, actually, I will say that. Uh, Marcus or Miles, sorry, Miles Brown's uh, Ghost Ride the Mule was actually my favorite moment. Plant my 40 inches and ghost ride the mule. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because, thank you. Uh, you know, thank you. Uh, Aloe Black, myself, and, and uh, Derek, we, we wrote the lyrics together. And I remember being in the studio, we actually were in the same studio where they filmed We Are the World. And I remember, like, I was like, okay, I had plant the 40 acres and I was like something something the mule I was like put rims on my mule like we need a joke here and Al Black was like ghost ride the mule and I ran out of the studio and called because <laughs> like at that moment I was like this is going to be crazy like this is <laughs> we have you know what I mean like I, like, I was like that's so it. why me though why did I have to be the one to say it with the higher octave though you could have gotten not you yeah, right. exactly. exactly. You made an impact yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, was, it, it was yeah it was it was perfect you, you did it was it. brilliant Thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, you. Peter Saji, before you go on, yes. um, not to uh, uh, blow your own horn, uh -huh. beep, beep, but was it that song nominated for a Grammy? Uh, uh, it, well, it, we actually, we won a, a musical supervisor award, actually. There so we, we go. Got, we got, uh, no, that's, 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 I think, the one award we won, uh, actually. Wow. But no, it's, it's, uh, I have it. Uh, I think actually Anthony, Anthony, Anthony Anderson, you accepted it on our behalf. Okay. You can, you can just call me Anthony, Peter. Um, <laughs> we, we can, we can move to just first names now. I think it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. after the first five minutes, we got it. And now it's just like, yo, Aunt, yo, turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 I do recall presenting that award that evening. Yes, that was a bit, that was a big night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that that was that was tremendous. But uh, a fish, fish. Yeah, please tell us about your your most memorable moment from. Uh, so many uh, that had mostly the best ones had to do with kids. 
uh, my daughter was there a lot and she was, I guess, nine or 10 and she mm -hmm. couldn't keep herself from kind of trying to be in the, in the number with us, which was fun. Your nephew was there, right, Tracy? And he was yeah. also trying to figure out how to, to be on the stage with us. Yep. Yep. Um, so those, those two people, those two young people being there and seeing their enthusiasm for it and uh, everything was really great. My daughter was running around fanning Jennifer a lot. I thought she, she got a job fanning Jennifer. That was good because Jennifer needed to. Jennifer needed to be fanned. Yeah, she needed to be fanned because that kick is, you know, exhausting. Um, some of my other favorite, one of my other favorite moments, and, and it, was, it was a weird kind of thing. It was, uh, it, it was about your earrings, Anthony. The, the conversation about your earrings. Oh, re remind remember me. That? Remember, you had, you had a couple of your beautiful diamond studs. Yeah. That you were wearing, and there was a whole conversation about whether or not it was appropriate or not, and blah, 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 blah. And, and we went back and forth, you and, you and Kenya went back and forth about it. I think we finally decided that the earrings should go, but then you had the, the great t-shirt that you see at the end. I am I my ancestors, ancestors wildest wild dreams. dreams. Yes. Which is, which is, you know, beyond, it's so beyond, you know, what our ancestors could have imagined, I think, you know, when you think about that. So again, it's just the historical context of the whole thing for me. Um, the fact that, you know, we even approached something like this and that it's been successful uh, is just, you know, it's, it's really gratifying. It makes me feel, you know, like there's value in what we do as actors um, that we can also, you know, we can entertain and we can also educate people in this way. It's just, it's, it's just a huge gift and I'm just, incredibly grateful for these kind of opportunities that continue to, to come up, that you know, continue to present themselves throughout all of the seasons of our show and and grownish and mixed-ish, you know, I mean, it's it's been it's been really, really beautiful. You know, the roots did also did a song and, and that that clip is one of the most sort of circulated clips that sort of happens that and it actually educates people about you know Juneteenth. And, um, and it's an easily sort of digestible, shareable sort of moment from that episode. Does anyone know how the roots got involved in this um, in this project? I, I think Miles know. made a few calls. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to say like you know made a few calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No people I just them. Yeah, 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 I just thought like, I was like pull up, you know what I'm saying? Just like pull up and do the song real quick, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I, I will say that I wrote lyrics. Uh, for you know for that song for the i am a slave bit that they did and black thought recorded my version i guess out of respect and then did his version which we were like yeah let's do that one uh, <laughs> I, actually have, I actually have a clip of black thought doing my lyrics which is awesome you know it's wow. uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll leak it for tens of dollars but, um, <laughs> uh, no, that clip just feels, sorry to interrupt, so powerful because even as a history nerd who I think grew up with the I'm just a Bill, I remember how well versed I have always been in white history. And there's something about that clip in particular in which it was really shifting the paradigm of seeing our stories in the same format with the same level of gravitas and accessibility that we've seen all of dominant culture. And so I remember the first time seeing kind of what the roots had done with the animation and being like, oh wow, we're going back to change what's even in history books. Mm -hmm. I am a slave, yes, I'm only a slave. They'll place my body in an unmarked grave in these Confederate days. It's kind of hard to lift every voice singing while mm -hmm. we're about how to that end, uh, Yara, why is it so important to normalize and celebrate this holiday? Yeah, this may sound super random and it's going to make sense in a second. I remember my favorite book when I started filming Blackish was Catcher in the Rye. And I don't know what I thought I had in common with this young white boy roaming around New York. But it, I think it spoke to the idea that it was just so normal for us to have to see ourselves and people that did not think of us um, in writing these stories. And there's something about 
what Blackish has done from the jump, but even this Juneteenth episode in particular, of having this moment on primetime television to say that this is not only something that we as Black people should be able to celebrate loudly and proudly, but this is something that we should expect everybody to know. It should be an expectation. It shouldn't be um, uh, applauded just because, oh my gosh, the white world's finally acknowledging this moment. This should be ingrained in our history. And it was really beautiful um, to see that because it makes it more accessible. It makes these conversations more accessible. It makes it really a part of our um, dialogue. Yeah. I also, I also, on top of that, and thank you, Yara, for articulating that so beautifully and adding that into a larger context, because I feel like, um, and personalizing it, you know, um, the more that we share our wholeness, the truth of our legacy, our history, the more we have an opportunity to heal in a really real way. Um, because so much of who we are, so much of who we come from has become um, is not a part of the wallpaper of our lives. And so an episode like um, Blackish, we always do it, but particularly with Juneteenth, allows it to become part of the regular vernacular, not just for everybody, but even for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's so important. Um, and it allows I, myself personally, like an opportunity to heal a place that had to be in the darkness, a place that um, had to be hidden away because it wasn't a part of regular conversation. Now, Tracy, do you have any sort of personal stories about how fans or, or, or people have reacted to this episode and, and what they've learned or how they've experienced it? No, you know, I think, um, yes, I do. But I think more what I'm so um, excited about right now in the context of the tectonic shifts that are happening and as the foundation is um, by design shifting beneath us, um, uh, that the way that this episode plays into that larger story that we've all been fighting towards for justice and equality um, is just incredibly important. And sometimes, you know, that's the beauty of television. Sometimes we don't, we don't know the impact all the time of, of, because it's in people's homes, you know, um, and there's a way that it becomes a part of just what people are experiencing. So I'm sure there are stories of, of people reacting that way and maybe somebody else in our family here has those but i i think it's more in the context particularly of what's happening right now how important it is to have this kind of material out there yeah and and we're seeing it i mean you know this is an episode or sorry this is a holiday that i feel like most people didn't know about before you know our episode aired and then you just had donald trump back off the holiday you know and like, and that's a person who doesn't typically do that. No, he's also worried about being elected. But I feel like so often white comfort trumps our liberal, liberal, I can't say that right. So often white comfort trumps our liberalism. I can't do it. Why liberalism? I, no, liberal, no. Being, freedom. How about that? So okay. often white comfort trumps our freedom. Um, and this was... Uh, and blackish all the time um, pushes on that comfort and that discomfort in a way that is so important. And yeah. Uh, does anyone else have any sort of uh, uh, memories of, of fans or, or, or people coming up and sort of sharing their experiences with watching this episode or, or what they've learned about the, the holiday because of it? I think what I loved the most was just seeing the clips that uh, from the episode circulate well after the episode had aired, whether it be uh, on Juneteenth since that moment, since we aired, or even just in general, I think it doesn't even require us leading up to the holiday to see um, those clips being shared as a part of our history. And it's really beautiful because just like Tracy said, it's such a personal experience watching television that oftentimes we don't know how people react once it moves into their homes. But I feel like that was an example just constantly seeing how it's made an impact on people and how it's really um, integrated into our everyday life. And building on top of that, even with like all of those clips that are being circulated and shared around, it's nice to look at the comment section and see what people are talking about. And everyone's like, why haven't we learned about this sooner? Like, why isn't this a part of our standard American culture? Um, and it's, it's nice to see that people are moving towards that and trying to make that happen. Um, and even celebrating it in their daily lives now, which I feel like that is enough to start to create a cultural shift, so. 
I think I think one thing. Um, I think while we were while we were uh, doing like all the rehearsals and stuff, I checked my phone to see the calendar to see if it was like if it was true that it wasn't really on the calendar. And I looked and it wasn't. And then I think it was a few weeks after we, we the uh, the episode even aired, I checked my my calendar randomly and I got a notification that it was Juneteenth. I was like, wow, it's like we really like did that. So I that was a really cool moment um, for me. Seeing, seeing the impact that we had on that episode, so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's also cool to see that it's not just, like, a certain audience that's watching. It's, like, their entire families that are looking at this, and it's, like, it doesn't matter what age. Like, people are understanding and um, having, like, it's, like, a learning session for, like, for everyone. Even with my little sister, she was dancing and singing the songs and stuff, and, like, she didn't even know. <laughs> I don't know if she even knew what she was singing, but is the fact that she actually is like wants to watch it and like like recognizes that it is something to look at it's um it's very cool and it's very sweet that other families um are affected by it as well I just want to thank all of you not just for you know doing this <laughs> suffering through my moderation but also just for honestly for for your performances in that episode like i think however long I work in this business, I think that will always be probably one of like my shining moments, honestly. And like, even getting choked up thinking about it, you guys are incredible. You know? Well, thank you for, thank you for writing it, Peter. And thank you for writing it so well, because it, it is, you know, again, it, it's going to have, uh, you know, far reaching effects, you know, for, for a long time, people are gonna, you know, really learn a lot and, and be changed by it. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Peter Saji. Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> it was an honor, Peter Saji. Uh, Goodbye, Marcus Scribner, Yara Shahidi. <laughs> so long, guys. Good um, to see you all. Um, Lawrence uh, Hilton Jacobs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Peter Saji. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> see you guys uh, in line to. Uh, Get our temperatures taken when we go, go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 guys! Uh, I just want to say before before we, we sign off on this that uh, it it uh, it warms my heart to see all of your faces, uh, to see all of your fa faces smiling and healthy. And I just want to tell you that I, I love all of you from the bottom of my heart. And um, I just I just wanted to say that I, I love I love you guys. We love you too, sir. Um, we love you, love you. Love you guys. Bye, TV family. Love you guys.